channel. It's Carl's Orchids again. And um, I suddenly just stopped making these um, report or not report after an orchid haul video. If I if it's time to directly report them, um, if they can stay as they are, and so on and so forth. And in this case, in this water hall, there's quite a lot to do. I'm not saying that the way Swerte keep their orchids in the greenhouse at the nursery is wrong by any means. That's not what I'm saying. In this purchase, there really was a lot of variation to the orchids and the setup they're in. So, for example, this one. Dendrobium tetragonum variation gigantia, yay, something like that. It's another mount, it's a lovely mount, uh, it's a beautiful mount. If I could keep it on this one, I would be so, so, so glad. And, well, you can see there's a little bit of um, sphagnum moss around the roots in the middle. But I would have to go over this one with my sprayer and dip it twice or yeah, a couple of times every day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't even want to think about the summer. So this one has got to come out of its mount, unfortunately. But I've been having this Dendrobium tetragonum before. That one did well in bark media, so I'm gonna I'm gonna place this one into bark media. But it will stay there for a while to soak, so it will be easier to um, release the uh, roots. Okay, and this one is also a uh, Dendrobium orchid. Dendrobium burana twist. And this one, I'm, I'm going to be really careful with this guy, guy. This one is really precious to me. It means a lot to have it. But it's sitting in wet media. I should have picked this one out of this pot immediately when I got it. But I didn't. I don't know why. I was in a hurry, I guess. So I'm on my way to a friend yesterday. They're sitting in solid sphagnum moss. And you all know what happens when you release all of the roots. <laughs> so what to do with this guy? I'm going to release it from a lot of this sphagnum moss. I sure will. Somebody place a layer of sphagnum moss around the old roots and placed her in a larger container. And that's a good idea. But this is soaking wet and I did not water it, I can assure you that. I'm not lying. So now the handyman are working again on drilling. Yay, yay, yay. Oh yes, box. Um okay. Ah, it's been divided here as well. But it's okay. And this one is well no it's not soggy like perhaps a little bit soft in there but we shall see about this what it is it's uh stuff going on in here unwelcome stuff but no it's um well it's okay i think well i'm not gonna fuss more with it than this I'm gonna let it stay in this small amount of uh, sphagnum moss I think I'm gonna smell it first before I make up my mind completely it's okay I smell worse in my lifetime I suppose yes Let's see what pot to choose. It's gonna sit in a clay pot with pine bark, one to two centimeter pine bark, regular bark, perhaps with a little bit of perlite in it. I'm, I'm not sure yet. This pot is gonna be suitable for it. Uh, it's uh, I think it's a nice size. Yes, like this. This part is not gonna perform anymore, so just place it somewhere like this. Perhaps this new growth is gonna perform. You can see a little. Little eye here, a little bump, or what can we say? So I think it's this one's new growth. It's gonna come out here. How does sure look like it? So, well, just go on like this. 
and add some bark media to it. So when the next time I'm gonna repot this guy, and this part is too small for it, yeah, it's adjusted to be sitting in bark. <laughs> okay? It's much easier to keep this orchid like this in bark. So, well, I'm not gonna put any perlite to it. Let's skip that. Yeah. This one is gonna give us a lovely new root system before long as well. So this is gonna be great. It's gonna do good in here. Let's just hope I don't forget to water it properly. Since this bark is really dry, even though it's been sitting in water for five days now. <laughs> So it's about time to uh, get rid of the water, <laughs> yeah. So it won't break down for us instead. That's a bad idea. But okay, wasn't easy at repotting enough, and I would like to stake her up. Now I got some proper flower stakes again. The bamboo sticks—they are <laughs> impossible to get hold of. So. Well, I will have to do with these guys, all right? Let's stake this one up. Stake this largest pseudobulb up, last year's growth or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm not sure, I wasn't there. I can just assume. Yes, and a stripe to it. And I think that's, that's enough staking. And a tag to the back side, like this. Okay, Dendrobium burana twist. It's now reported in tip bark media and it roots. We're looking okay. So, I'm pleased. I hope this one will grow on nicely so I can make a care collab on this guy before long. Some time ago, I used uh, smoothie cups, little plastic cups, the vampire bites, <laughs> two holes to them, for my Phalaenopsis orchids, my species Phalaenopsis orchids. And I had some long strands of uh, sphagnum moss mixed up with a little bit of perlite. And I added the moss to the bottom here, like this, and pressed it quite tightly down there. So I just covered, just about covered the holes here. And I pressed the uh, sphagnum moss quite tight to the bottom all the way up to the holes here, like this. Here's some more sphagnum moss. Put it there and spray it, so it's easy to work with. And the pearl like this is already in this enough. So, let's squeeze it a little bit so the moisture evens up a little bit in the bucket here. <laughs> okay, what am I gonna do? Look at this one. This is my um, Phalaenopsis ludimaniana. It's a species, it's a lovely one. I had a couple of years now. And all of a sudden I decided to uh, remove it from its um, yeah, plastic cup with sphagnum moss and perlite. Since I thought that, I was a little bit afraid that the roots were dying off when I, every time I fertilized them, when they were sitting in sphagnum moss, like this. It was quite uh, difficult to fertilize them, but it's not doing bad in this setup either. It's been sitting here for a while now, and it's still got some algae, so I cannot complain about that these guys in the cups here are getting algae to the side. Since this one is also getting algae, and this one is not sitting in direct sunlight, and this one is not potted up in solid sphagnum moss. It's a mixture of sphagnum moss and something else. So this wasn't better and it has not bloomed for me since then. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go back to the basic, even with this guy. But we're gonna start with one, one of the orchids, Phalaenopsis, I got recently. In this order, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna use the scissors. Here's a nice new scissor. And this lovely orchid is, um, didn't say, 
it's uh, Phalaenopsis Sogo Vivian Sogo, yay. The one with variegated leaves, as you can see here, and also in spike. So, I have to cut this plastic container open. Doesn't matter, since I'm never going to use this one again. Or anything else in my collection, that is, never. Okay, throw it away. And let's see what we got. Moss with a lot of algae to the top of it as a top layer. And it's really tightly pressed, but it's okay, I think. It likes its humidity. And this one has not been watered for quite a while, even though it's uh, soaking wet. And the water is from the nursery. So this one is really used to be sitting in this fair amount of water all of the time. <laughs> And all this humidity and damp media. It doesn't seem to harm it. That's how I got the idea of having them in, in a somewhat um, semi-hydro or semi-water culture, but still in sphagnum moss. No lecker. <laughs> now, let's smell the media. Yeah, and it's okay. And I see no point in switching and release all of the media. Uh, but what I can do is release the uh, the parts that are too tightly packed here. It won't be any good to this orchid, I think, in the future. Yeah, now you can see this one has been sitting in a really small pot before they switched to this pot, but I see no dead roots, so it didn't do this guy any harm. So it will just stay in this media. Perhaps it's not so old. Let's just um, add a Thin layer of new sphagnum moss around it. It's okay. Like this. New sphagnum moss around it. And then. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see the holes to the front side. So I can place her. I think down like this. And press her down. Not. And not break the roots. <laughs> yes. So. And this way I'm not disturbing the orchid. Well, they're not so sensitive, these um, Phalaenopsis orchids, if they're in bloom. Doesn't matter if you repot them in bloom or not. They won't have bud blast in most cases because of that anyway. It's mostly because of chilly air and draught. The bl bud blast appear. Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. I wouldn't want to press the roots too much. So now she's repotted and I will have to press the uh, moss down a little bit so the air pockets will be filled. It's a bit like catecedum repotting <laughs> this. Ah, this is really great. It really works. So. Why change a winning concept? Even though it's, uh, it means that I have quite a few different setups, but I think that's fun. That's the whole point with orchid growing. It should be easy, it should be fun, and <laughs> it should of course work and make the orchids thrive. Yes. And the same thing goes for The other ones, such as this one, Fail Stuachiana Sogo. Release it from this little ugly plastic cup and see what's going on here. Well, not so much. Smell the media and get rid of the algae, the moss with algae on it, like this. Okie dokie. Yay. And of course, you can place a layer of uh, something else to the top, perhaps bark, but that would dry out the, the, um, the surface and perhaps in some cases dry out the um, new root tips. So, yeah, I think I will we'll better stick to the... <laughs> To have some algae on top instead. Yes. And this root I will spray. So I can 
bend it down a bit without breaking it. And now add a layer around it like this. The same way as for the other one. We just repart it together. Uh, and for your information, uh, this is the sphagnum moss I'm using. My, it's from New Zealand. So let's see, the next one up. Well, it's not my cereal. <laughs> Gosh, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm eating breakfast now. Yay! Why not? Next one up in the spotlight is... Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's my Moniera Millennium Magic Witchcraft. It's a lovely one that I want, want it for so long. And this one is going to be an easy one. I'm going to cut the old plastic, thin plastic cut away from it, of course. I don't want to see it anymore. And throw it in the bin and get rid of the algae moss on top here that's eating up the uh, nutrients so i heard and this one is damp yeah so they already started to water this guy or perhaps they yeah they're using the same trick as <laughs> i'm trying to use myself on my black pearl fred clark era black pearl the one that i made a care collab about not long ago I can make a link if you would like to see the care collab. But anyway, <laughs> they're already watering this guy. And it doesn't seem to be doing this new growth any harm. Because normally, in this stage of growing, it would be really, really harmful to the whole orchid. Alright? If you start watering, watering this early, after a heavy dormant period, that is... So perhaps a trickle of water every now and then. Keep the old roots. Never mind the old sphagnum moss. And do as I'm gonna do right now, because that's the thing that really worked out so well for my catacinums a couple of years ago. So now, as I said, back to the basic. I'm gonna use this one, this nine centimeter pot. As you always say that catacinums should be sitting in small pots. Nine centimeter is not a small pot. But it's okay for this one. Look, if this new growth is going to be the size of this cane, it will need this space. Some people even say that growing catacetums in larger pots is better for them. So, well, <laughs> different schools, different ideas. But it doesn't mean that one idea is the only one that's working. So you should try out a few of the ideas and see which ones gives you the best result and less effort. Yeah. Add some sphagnum moss to the front side here, to the newest part, and press the old part back side. So you will have sufficient room for this guy to grow. It's the future of this one. It needs some space. You shouldn't focus on having enough room for the back side. You can always split up an orchid like this, a catacetum type orchid, with good results. They can easily put out a new growth as soon as you divide them. I'm gonna let the new roots find their own way down into the media. That's a little bit airy to the bottom, but we need the space in order to make the new roots go down into my project. This cup, this little bit higher smoothie cup. As for the ones that I just used for my phalaenopsis, this one is a lot higher and I'm gonna fill up oh, the water reservoir to the bottom here and make its new roots go down and yeah make this orchid be sitting in some kind of semi-water culture and that really worked for a few of my catacinums as I said. So let's go back to the basic, uh, basic and use the same setup one more time and see how it goes. Now let's take the orchid up. And not too tight here, since this one is going to be plump again before long. 
it's going to be even more plump, I think. Or perhaps not. I'm, I'm not really sure. Since they already started to want this guy. We shall see. So, <laughs> here's a Kitley Orchid. It's time to report her. It's Mirmi Catavola. Yay! <laughs> Francis Fox Sunspots. The one that I thought that I really, really did need another copy of. Uh, it should look a little bit different, the flowers at least. <laughs> it's going to be so nice and so fun and interesting to compare the two guys with each other to see if there's really any difference to the blooms. Or if it's not, I don't care. <laughs> then I have two of them. <laughs> um, perhaps they can bloom on different periods of the year as well. So yeah, maybe this is a real good thing that I got this one. And it's, um, it's almost in its growing stage a little bit, so I'm not so worried. I'm gonna release a little bit of the sphagnum moss. As you can see, it's uh, disgusting, this moss here. It's really... <laughs> uh, it even smells bad. It smells like... Uh, uh, war paint! <laughs> it's a really strong uh, scent that I never tasted before. At least... Luckily, not an orchid. <laughs> So I better get rid of the uh, most part of this bag moss before this orchid goes downhill because of that. Its roots are alive, most of them I think. Uh, of course not on the oldest part, but they never are. So that's nothing wrong and strange to that discovery. Well, the roots aren't really the best, but they're okay, nothing more. And I will just leave a little bit, as I said, and add bark. Let's just see which part to choose now. This part is quite large, but as I'm putting it into bark media, this dry bark media, it won't keep the moisture that long, but it will keep the moisture inside here. So this part is going to be okay for it. I made up my mind now. Let's just switch gloves. We're not, I don't know what, what I'm dealing with here, so... No, just fill this pot up. It's nothing more... Nothing else to wait for. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy enough. It's always done. <laughs> no. We're not done. Not yet, but soon. Very soon. Maybe I should have cleaned this orchid up a little bit more, but it's okay. So, let's see if she's doing better in bark, in bark media. So, hey, nice. Now just place the tag. I don't like it when they, oh. They place the tag on the outside of the package. Place the tag and I will stake her up later on. So, next up on the table is my Encyclia Cordigera, and this one is a warm to hot grower, and she also likes to dry out between waterings, and she likes to be fertilized the whole year around, at least when I looked it up. But as it arrived, it looked like, looked like this little bit dark ring here, and I didn't uh, take any notice of that. I didn't really see it properly, but it was soft. So I think it perhaps was a little bit of cold damage since they sent the orchid a bit early and still they waited one week to send them to me in order to uh, the weather to be a little bit better, a little bit warmer. So they did what they could and I was so eager to get the orchid. So, But I, I um, what can we say? I got rid of all the, um, I cut into the uh, pseudobar with a knife and I got rid of all the soft stuff that was in it, and I put some cinnamon into it. Maybe it won't work, but that's the best I can do. And as the pseudobob is uh, producing a new growth as well, so... Hmm, well, yeah, maybe this one will uh, be, be large enough to uh, <laughs> make it on her own. So it will be perfectly fine to separate it from this large pseudobob if this one rots off even more in the future. So I think it's going to be okay. As well as, where does this come from? Ah, 
the oldest pseudobarbi is also producing something here. So, but this one is not going to be a large growth, I don't think. I don't really fans of the media it's sitting in, since I read that this one likes to be its roots to be drying out quite rapidly. So, and I, on my behalf, would like to see the roots and its progress, since I think this orchid is such a interesting one. And as she's setting out, I think it's, yeah, can it be? Yeah, the old one. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be perfectly safe to uh, uh, release this one from its new growth later on. She's producing three new lovely growth here, so it will be perfectly safe to get rid of that one if it fails. So I will have to keep an eye on this hole here and make sure that it's dry enough and don't put water on it, <laughs> then the uh, cinnamon will fall down on the roots and dry them off. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things to keep my eyes on these days, I think. In this case, I feel that it's a little bit more safe to get rid of the sphagnum moss and replace it with bark, since it's putting out all these new growth and it's uh, got some new lovely roots at the base as well so it's gonna be great now it's okay but what to do now hmm well i can start with just using a regular plastic pot and then if i see that the roots are growing and that this guy is doing fine i can just lift him up and place him into a clay pot if I prefer that at that time. Let's place him in something else. Um, I have the perfect pot here for him not long ago. Let's just see if I can find it again. Yes I have it here. It's a lovely lovely pot. This one is 12 centimeter and this one is 10 I think and it also has got some pre-made ventilation hose in it so that will be fine. Put some styrofoam peanuts into the bottom, like this, and add some bark, of course, to the bottom. Since this one has got a quite a shallow root system, it's not in need of a large, or I mean a deep pot. And all its new root, uh, growth is coming out in the front side, so we'll just spread them out a bit here, like this. and. See if I can place him a bit more to the back side. But I still would like some space for this little guy here, this growth. Yes, we'll be fine. And this bark media is saturated enough now. It's been, as I said, it's been lying there in water for a few days in case of a repot. Now the pot is even smaller, and that's lovely. Well, I wouldn't want to have bark to the backside here. I will place some lecca beans to keep it a little bit more dry. Okay. Here. Since this orchid seemed to be prone to rot, to catch some rottening. Now when I know it, Let's just uh, make it right from the beginning, shall we? Yes, like the beans there. Just uh, put its tag back somewhere like this and uh, stake him up with some proper stakes. Now you know the deal, but uh, this is how it's going to be. Yes. All right, and Cicla cordigera. Now we part it into bark media. Uh, we shall see how it goes. And I think it will be great. I don't kill so many orchids, thank God. <laughs> so now it's this guy's turn. This funny. RLC Gyrac Contour is sitting in this net basket. 
<laughs> with this tray on top with holes in it and it's stuck to it. Um, <laughs> I just have to figure out how to uh, <laughs> get it out of this uh, basket. Svanda basket. Uh, I guess this will take a oh. can take a while. All right. So after five minutes, I'm finally getting it out of its spot here. A basket, shall we say? Um, well, am I getting it? Oh, oh, yes. I lost one or two root tips here. What's really difficult. So what about this one? <laughs> This one, I, <laughs> I will never get it out of this one, so just forget that thought. So whatever this thing does, it will have to do it <laughs> on top of this tray here. Well, <laughs> for now, it's... um. No, I have to get rid of this stupid thingy here. What on earth is this? Oh. We'll never use this one again anyway, so. It's growth is gonna be <clears throat> to this side, so. Um, um, um. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> it's not an easy task for me, but I will have to cut this one. Ooh. Yeah, this time I managed to cut it through, but. Oh, Jesus. And whew, I'm so close to the new roofs here. Oh. Oh. Yes. Mm. All right, let's see. <sighs> We're getting there. Now it's got a little bit of room here to grow in. Maybe some other time I can, yeah, get rid of the rest of it, perhaps. That's crazy. Oh. But <laughs> still it's going to hold the moisture down a bit. So now, now it's got proper room when I cut it a bit <laughs> for its new growth here after this one to grow on nicely. So I picked up I picked out the nice lecker beams here from the batch I had and I shortly cleaned them a lot. Uh, I don't want uh, split lecker beams. So can this be okay? for it. One thing I know for certain is that I cannot keep it bare rooted. It will, uh, in that case, it will 100% die off for me. So, it cannot be so bad with this lecker set up for it. So, <laughs> that was the strangest reporting I ever done. And so where to put the steak? Ha <laughs> ha That would be fun. I don't know if this is going to be a great idea, but uh, and it's a pity I cannot get rid of this uh, tray. i got no choice. And yeah, this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Better than nothing. Uh, we shall see what happens if it's roofs will survive this treatment. I hope so. Yeah, and I'm not gonna water it um, before it's totally, uh, it's dry and then I'm just gonna flush it and yeah, in a while, in a month or so, I'm gonna uh, add a reservoir to the bottom here to give this orchid a chance to adapt to its new setup. So now over to the most difficult plant of them all. <laughs> This is a heavy repotting session. I know that. I am aware of it. But I... Uh, I'm encountering problems and difficulties on my way all of the time. So this is really challenging this time, I think. 
It's a bit... All I'm after is to tag here. So, okay, how to get um, get it out, uh, off the mount properly, nicely and carefully. How? <laughs> I never... Yeah, of course I've done that before, but uh, it's nothing that I'm doing every day. It's inevitable to destroy a couple of these roots, but I cannot keep it on this mount. It will surely die for me. And that's not the uh, idea. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Somebody tied it with a, uh, a metal wire, I think. Or, yeah, these metal wires. Uh, <laughs> you can see that I'm not used to dealing with the uh, mounts. <laughs> but, well, it's, um, it's okay, I think. It's, um... I'm doing it quite all right, in a way. I didn't lose any roots, so. Oh, good job. And it's also got a new um, growth here, so, well, managed to save that one also. And this one has got pendant uh, canes. And I like them that way of course I do. So they're still gonna be pendant. Somewhat pendant anyway. But they're gonna be pendant in a plastic pot. I'm gonna use this size pot. 10 centimeter pot. And its root system is quite shallow but it's gonna be longer since I had this variety before. It doesn't have a short root system in a pot. Uh, I'm not gonna make it a soggy pot, so styrofoam peanuts in the bottom and it also likes to be moist almost all of the time So let's mix some bark media up with some uh, rock wool Let's see if this is gonna be enough for him This piece is unwanted Throw it away well, let's see. No, it doesn't have any ventilation holes, but I think it's okay anyway. Press them up and yeah, form the roots as a ball and put it down there and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. And spread the roots a little bit. That's my thought. And watch out for this new growth down the little one there, the purple one. I mean, it's going upright since it was sitting on a mount. <laughs> so, we shall see what to do. Be careful. It's really difficult to see it. <laughs> it's the same color as, as the uh, bark. Yeah. Since I bloomed this variety before, I think it it can do well here. Press it properly. Yeah. And this is the roots down there. Be careful, I have to be careful with the uh, new growth wherever it is. Yeah, it's there, it's down there, so just have to be so careful with it. Yeah, and don't get it too wet as well. No, this is it, I think. It's the best I can do. And this new growth is coming out to the front. Uh, no, it's coming out here. Ah, it doesn't matter. But it's no point in, in staking this guy up. I don't think so. It might as well just be uh, hanging here. Never mind. Yeah, but I think it looks nice and I think it's going to do fine here. So now we have three puffy petals left. And I looked at this one. It's a Henry Annum. And I just watered him. And I don't think this... Uh, 
orchid is in a uh, terrible state or desperate need of repotting. I think it can stay in this media, in this pot, for a while. It looks great, I think. So, just leave it be, for now. And the same goes for this orchid. This one. This um, Papupellum exuo times Rocciolianum. The roots are looking great. Uh, the spark. And it's also putting out a new growth uh, there. And I'm not going to disturb it now. And I just staked it up a little bit so it doesn't lean to the side so much. So it's okay, I think. Put it up one side as well. But this one, the most fancy one of them all, Papiopedalum hirsutissimum. I cannot see what the roots look like. I cannot see anything. No. I will have to check. I wouldn't want to get into the same situation as I was in before with my other pep pep petalums. So, I want to be sure what it looks like. I hope that I can get it out here. Seem to be stuck somewhere in the bottom, I don't know, but uh, we shall... Um... <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's sticking is the roots, so I have to... Uh, Saturate the roots a little bit before I can release them from the pot here. So I have to wait a few minutes. So meanwhile, I mix the media up for it, and now I think it's safe to go. Yeah, that's all it needed. A little bit of water. Uh, yes, okay. Um, no, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get rid of all the media since I don't know what it is. Let's see. Well, it's um, it's got good roots, I think. So this little guy is um eating. It's um, it's got a quite a large root system here. This little thingy, and I don't want it <laughs> in there to steal the nutrients from my guy here. No, it's not gonna happen. But still, it's a decent root system. It's a uh, not only decent, it's a, it's a quite lovely one. No soggy roots, I think. Not at all. Yeah, it's, it's great, I think. It's nice. Really nice. See, what kind of pot I will use? I think the root system is quite large. It needs a more deep pot, I think. Like this one. Deeper one. And the one it arrived in. This one is going to hold it perfectly, hold the roots perfectly. And where's the growing point? Um, it can be here, the growing point is going to be later on. Ah, yeah, it's coming on here already. Yay! So, place it a little bit to the side then and give this. New growth, a chance to develop. And I mixed the media, um, a little bit more soil-like, um, already mixed um, orchid mix. <laughs> yeah, with some uh, eggshells, perlite, um, coconut husk, as well as rock wool. Just like last time, in my heavy repotting session, my puffy petals. Yes. And tap the pot. Yes. See now. Yes. So now my uh, Papiopedalum hirsutissimum is repotted. Looks great. In a somewhat deeper part this time to hold all of its roots. And now I'm going to place it into this brown, dark outside container. To protect it from uh, its roots from uh, the sun <laughs> a bit. So, well, this was a heavy reporting session again, but yeah, I'm glad you stuck with me all the way to the end of this video. And now we're gonna watch the progress on this beautiful Swarta orchid hole. And until I see you next time, thank you so much for watching and take care as always. 
Okay. And if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. I will be happy if you did so. And bye-bye.